All right, everybody. Welcome to that interview that you all have been waiting for. It is a pleasure to be with you this afternoon, and I'm sure you will get all the fireworks and all the explanations that you have been looking forward to. Please help me welcome Mr. Reno Amakari into the studio with us. Mr. Reno, can you see Hello, me now? Dear. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you Excellent. hear me? I great. can hear you loud and clear. Great, great, great. We're pleased to have you. All right, Reno. Okay, everybody has been waiting for this interview to, um, to listen to you debunk the claims that were made to um, made by uh, Tawori, okay? I'm not going to pretend that you are here to do me the honors because I'm really honored to have a personality like you in the office of the citizen. So let's just cut to things, okay? Tell us, okay. About, tell, us, tell us about yourself, you know. Let us establish the connection between you and um, President Goodluck Jonathan because it's quite a big deal for him to come out and make that, um, you know, debunkment on your behalf saying that he did not fire you for criminal activities. So please go ahead and talk about that. What is your connection to Good, Good Luck Jonathan right now and why he had to do that on your behalf? Well, he's my very good friend. We're very close. Yeah. Um, last year, he spent 10 days with me and my family in California. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I served in his government meritoriously, as you saw in the letter that um, he wrote. Mm -hmm. And um, I was very loyal. And by nature, I'm, I'm a loyal person, you know. I mean, people who've worked with me, who've known me from time, it's just my nature. That's how my parents brought me up. Mm -hmm. And he respects that. Because if you read scripture, you see, God did not promote uh, Christ uh, and give him a name above all names. As you see in Philippians chapter uh, 2, uh, because Christ was intelligent. No, he did that because Christ was loyal. Mm -hmm. And President Jonathan saw loyalty in me, and that's why he did that. Okay, so so Tawari said that you were fired for criminal activity, but he did not say that on this program. He said that in uh, another program. What kind of criminal activity was he insinuating? Hello? Okay, so um, I'm going to send another guest link to... Um, to a mockery, all right, because this keeps kick, kicking him out. Hello, Reno. Okay, so while we're waiting to get Reno back, while we're getting, um, hoping to get Reno back, um. Please send in your questions for Reno, because as soon as he comes back on, we'll start firing on with the questions, okay? Uh, Reno, please log back in. I want to know, hello, are you back? Yes, I don't know, you tell me, okay. No, stream is not over, welcome back. Okay. So we were talking about the kind of criminal activity Shawari was insinuating. Please go ahead. Oh, well, there's no criminal activities, you know, like yeah. I served meritoriously, as you saw mm -hmm. the president put, you know. Mm -hmm. um, first and foremost, I'll, I mean, I'll just show you because it's not just good we just talked about it. Let's also show your viewers. You know, yes. this is uh, Shawari. He went on this uh, program and you see him there. I, I, I hope your viewers can see it. Yes. 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 Uh, yeah, no, Shawari accuses Renaud Mokri. Uh, says he was fired by President Jonathan before he left office. Can you read it? You can see it, yes, right? Uh, yes, I have that video, yes. Okay, and then now well, you see um, President Jonathan now came up and debunked that. You yes. know, um, he Not only did he debunk that, he also um, released a statement to the media, and what he said was that I worked with him completely for four years, I wasn't fired, he doesn't know where this guy got, I mean, that from, and that my, the record of my service is um, uh, with the federal government at the office yeah. of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. So, yes. I mean, obviously, Omar Yenisoware is a liar, and he's not just a liar, I mean, he's been doing this for a very long time, he's a black okay, 
we will get into that. We will get into that. But okay. uh, um, how, how long did you say you served? Four years. Yeah, I was appointed August 17, 2011. President Jonathan put that in his letter. And I served for four years until he left office, May 29, 2015. As a matter of fact, we left office together. We remained okay. very close, you know. Somebody asked um, how Obi Asika came into the picture. Obi Asika, yeah. Obi Asika was appointed by President Jonathan on the recommendation of the then Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Ayim, yeah. Pius Ayim. You know, President mm -hmm. Jonathan never met Obi Asika. He just did that because he wanted to placate the Southeast because he was mm -hmm. expecting block votes from the Southeast. It was just a political move. Obi Asika was appointed two months to the election. So okay. the elections, the elections were, uh, were meant to hold in February. Obi Asika mm -hmm. was appointed in at the end of December. So there was okay. nothing. It was just an election move, and politicians do that all the time. Okay. All right. So let me ask you, as the voice of the president back in the day, all right, media reps in Nigeria, or, or, or you know, um, essentially. They go out and they disparage and demonize, right? And um, try to make people look bad with half truth, right? Um, I don't expect that. That is what we want to do here with Showery. We are going to come out with facts and figures and state our truth. Um, um, well, Regina, probably you don't know my reputation. Yes. I have a reputation for facts. I'm yes. a number one best-selling author. The title of my book that was the number one bestseller best is Facts versus fiction, the true yes. story of the Jonathan years. I, have, yes. I mean, I don't talk anyhow. I don't disparage. I speak with facts. Great. And I believe yes. I've demonstrated that to you. Yes. Omar Yadisobari was on your show, and he said he never supported um, General Muhammad Buhari nor campaigned for him. Mm -hmm. Did I not send you a video which I created which showed him confessing, admitting mm -hmm. with his own mouth I mean, yes. Maybe I should play the video for your for your um, followers so that it's I mean, on my timeline, Reno. It's on my timeline, so they have it. Yeah, yeah. But so let's they just show play it. for your viewers. Let's just play it for them. Let's play it for your viewers. <laughs> Thirty years. But they show it on my timeline. First, as a student union leader, and of course, as a leader of a media movement that brought <laughs> the government that is that today rubbish. into power that because is we, we, okay. we get the power on my. Now you heard him. He said yes. he brought. He brought General Muhammad Buhari into power, his own words. And yes. he said that General Muhammad Buhari came to power on his own back. So how come he was on your show mm -hmm. lying about that? Okay, so, but what was the context? What was the context? It's not as if he was working with them. Was he working in the, uh, um, whatever group that was working towards installing President Buhari? I don't think so. I uh, think can I respond to that? Ask yes. a question and allow me to respond. Okay. Okay, now, because, you know, I deal in facts. I don't, I don't deal in conjecture. This is a video. I'm going to pause it now. This video was taken outside APC's headquarters. Mm -hmm. Outside APC's headquarters. Now, I'm going to play Where the video. Everybody was jubilating. Not, every, not everybody. Omo Yale was jubilating. The crowd surrounded him. Yes. And they draped him in the APC flag. And yes. they gave, and they yelled, there was a broom, and there were pictures yes. of Muhammad Buhari. Now, not just that, I have a, a sworn affidavit yes. of the publicity secretary of the APC at that time, in 2014. Mm -hmm. he, he swore to an affidavit, which I have, that yes. he went to New York and had a strategy meeting with Omar Yane Sowari at the offices of Sahara Reporters. I also have, and I can show it to you here, it's on WhatsApp, another statement by, this time it was not a spokesman, it was just a top member of the APC, stating that he met with Omar Yale Sowari at APC's headquarters. So what are you talking about? Are these not facts? Okay, okay, so let me ask you, because this makes me a little uncomfortable, right? In the, in the government of Jonathan, there was so much going on, so much thievery and brigandry and looting and all kinds of things going on. And then the rest of us Nigerians were really livid that, you know, those monies that are being uh, looted should be used to develop the communities, to build a society, to provide work for the unemployed Nigerian youth. We were really living. And the insecurity at that time was so much. People were getting bombed and murdered in the streets. There was a bloodbath everywhere. So when the time for elections came, we were all looking for 
anything and anyone to step into that office and restore or, or help Nigeria stand, right? So when Buhari came into the picture, all of us were angry. You know, if it's going to be Buhari, so, so be it. But Can I respond it, to that? It, it, I'm, uh, let me land. It did not look as if Duncan was able to, you know, get things under control. So even I was can one I, of the people can who I respond? Can, for Regina, Buhari. So when I told that so many of us were agitating Regina, for this. Regina. Yes, yes, I, yes. I'm gonna I, I need to respond to that, Regina. Okay, you are, okay you go are, ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Now, Regina, you need to understand this. That, mm -hmm. that, um, under Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! Why does this keep kicking him out? No, no, Reno. We need you back because we got to talk about this. Okay, I'm sending him a link again. Um. I sent him a link again. He's going to click on the link and come back in and we'll continue this discussion. As many times as, as this thing kicks him out, that's the many times I'll bring him back. Okay, hopefully he will um, agree to stay with us. Reno? Okay. Hello, Reno. Yes, I'm so sorry. I don't know why that is happening with you. Really? Yeah, it's coming from your end. Okay, so um, let me continue now. Um, uh, Regina, I deal in facts. I don't deal in fictions. Um, in this world, there, there, there are two bodies. There's a body, the Global Terrorism Index, which is an objective body meant to adjudicate on the issue of insecurity. It's not owned by the PDP or by the APC or by the Nigerian government. It's an independent body. And then you also have Transparency International which is an independent body meant to adjudicate on who is corrupt. Now, according to the Global Terrorism Index, Nigeria is more insecure today than yes. at any time under Jonathan. In fact, as a matter of fact, Nigeria was the fourth most corrupt, was the fourth most terrorized nation in the world under Jonathan, according to the Global Terrorism Index. And you can Google that. Your guests, your listeners can Google that. But now, Nigeria is the third most terrorized nation in the world. Actually, now we are now more terrorized and insecure than Syria. And then also, according to Transparency International, Nigeria is now more corrupt now under General Muhammad Buhari than at any time under Jonathan. Now, you talked about there was so much thievery under Jonathan. You see, that's the issue I'm trying to point, uh, point out. All those things were propaganda. They were lies being spread by Sahara reporters. Now, I put up a picture when Omar Yalisa Wari denied that he worked with um, the APC. I showed a picture where you had Omar Yalisa Wari, Nasir El Rufai, who was then the Deputy Secretary of the APC, and then Sanusi Lamido Sanusi. Now, these, all of them were APC people. Now, the defense that Omar Yalisa Wari put up is that, well, he was just a journalist doing his job. That's not true. He was brought, he was actually driven to that event by Nasir El Rufai. He went for a meeting with Nasir al and then the two of them came there. Now, I'm going to give you 15 lies. Now, listen to this. 15 lies that Sahara reporters wrote, which made people like you believe that, that um, uh, all these things that Jonathan, that Jonathan was corrupt. 15 lies. And I'm going to Wait give you... Wait a minute, Reno. Wait a minute. <laughs> you have gone very far. You talked about terrorism and insecurity, okay? Those things yeah, but, are... No, no, no. Regina, present in the Jonathan dispensation. Insecurity Reg was also present, which is why we were all... Regina... It was Reg there. And then you said that there was no corruption. There was no uh, uh, looting of... No, Re Re Regina... In this country covered from... Re Regina, Regina. Where did they come from? They were recovered. And what about the no, Regina? Where did they get all the money from? Okay. No, no, Regina, Regina. don't do that. Okay, you let me not do that. Let me be quiet. Yes, it's let me be quiet. You, do this. you don't yes. affect my train of thoughts. Yes, I'm sorry. Your train of thought was you were going to talk about 15 minutes. No, so allow me, just allow me. Uh, don't worry, okay. allow me. Allow okay, me. okay. And please don't interject. Please, okay. I'm, I'm going to be quiet. I'll allow you to ask your questions. Yes. I'll allow you to ask your questions. Well, but don't, don't don't yes. Okay. Now, so here's the thing now. I'm going to give you. Um, Omar Yelesto Ware Sarah reporters accused mm -hmm. President Jonathan of stealing 28 billion. Mm -hmm. Now, they said that Jonathan looted 32 billion. On, mm -hmm. that, this is on February 2, 2015, and that he is one of the richest presidents in Africa. 
Now, that, this was done two weeks to the election. Now, on, um, he said on, on, uh, on April 13, 2014, that Jonathan actually gave out, he, he had um, um, a wedding for his daughter, and during mm -hmm. that wedding, he gave out gold-plated iPhones. Now, he well, said that, that was published on uh, April yeah. 13, 2014. Now, he also said that Jonathan's administration looted $49 billion from the federal government. Now, that mm. was published on February 20, sorry, February 14, 2014. Then he also said that Jonathan did not care about the Chibot girls, and he did nothing to rescue them. Now, this was published on various dates, and it was officially debunked by the British government. So now, on, um, uh, he also said, and I'm giving you the dates, listen to this, I'm giving yes. you the dates. On, yes. on September 22, 2013, that Jonathan led a 600-man uh, delegation to the United Nations, which was a lie. He also said that Jonathan was a drunkard, November 22, 2013. He also said that Jonathan shared $1.1 billion between himself and his attorney general, Adoke, which if that was published on May 27, 2012. He also said, this is our reporters, that Jonathan stole $20 billion in three years, published on July 12, 2014. He also said that Jonathan was worth $120 million. This was yes. published on um, October 14, 2014. He also said that Jonathan is a sponsor of the Niger Delta militants. And then finally, on May 15, 2015, he said Jonathan and the Abacha family shared the Abacha loose. Now, all these I've given you dates. You can Google them. Your readers can also Google them. And all these things were lies. Mm -hmm. All of these things were lies. Now, I was interviewed on Channel Television um, last week, on Sunday. And what I said on Channel Television is this, and I'm going to repeat it to you. I said, yeah. these figures that Magu was quoting, that he recovered, that they are lies. And that the monies were not deposited in the central bank. That this was just a media trial to deceive Nigerians. Ten hours after I made that statement, the DSS arrested Magu. And then the presidential investigation panel, being headed by Justice Ayo Salami, repeated what I said, that the figures that Magu gave, that he had recovered, the looted funds, were not, it was just a media creation that it was not deposited in the central bank. So you have to re remember, Regina, I deal in facts. The reason why you, Regina, believe those stories and why a lot of people believe those stories is because Sahara reporters put them there and then people believe them. And then the APC will release a statement and say, oh, it came out of several reporters. And people will believe them. This is their lives. Jonathan has been out of office now for five years. How come these monies have not been traced to him? Two months ago, the Buhari administration wrote a, a letter to the U.S., um, uh, I think the, uh, the Sixth Circuit uh, judge in New York, where you live, and they asked for a warrant seeking to search the United States for any bank accounts held by President Jonathan. I'm sure you read that, right? Yeah. Now, how come they have not come out to say what, what, what they found? We got the, we got, we got the, uh, the, because by U.S. law, they also have to send it to the person who is accused. Not one account was linked to President Jonathan, not one, both in the U.S. and in the U.K. So okay. you have to understand. Now, yes. look, look at the corruption in this administration. Yes. Who owns the Ikoi apartment billions? They've not said it. If it was Jonathan or anybody linked to the Jonathan government, it would have taken them two seconds. Mm -hmm. Now, the former, the, the immediate past minister of state for petroleum, Ibe Kachu, mm -hmm. there was a memo leaked where he said $25 billion worth of illegal scam contracts were given out to the NNPC. As I speak to you till today, nothing was done. It was not investigated. Aisha Buhari, her ADC was arrested. He was accused of looting billions. What has happened? He was never tried. Mm -hmm. So what are we talking about? According to Transparency International, not according to me, not according to the PDP, not according to you, according mm -hmm. to Transparency International, this administration is more corrupt than at any time under the PDP. And right. let me tell you, the yeah. only reason why Magu was arrested mm -hmm. is because Nigeria is broke. And General Muhammad Buhari desperately needs money. So he uh, approached China and the US and the UK to try to get money. China yes. agreed to give him some money, but they agreed to give him chicken change. The US and the UK said they were not going to give him money unless he addressed the corruption at the ESCC. Thank you, okay. Mr. Regina. All right. Thank you so much for laying all that out. I'm really happy you stated the fact 
and figures and dates and all that. Okay, but it seems to me like you and Shawari are doing the same thing. You are criticizing the government. You are bringing out the truth that, it's, uh, that they're trying to hide. You are throwing light on the corrupt uh, practices that's going on. So what I don't understand is if you both are criticizing the government, uh, and trying to, you know, air out things. What is your ground? Is it because Let, can I answer that? Let me yes. answer that. Ask a question. Yes. No, yes. no, no. What we is your ground? Is so worried. Yes. No, we, no, we are not doing the same thing. I criticize based on facts. Yes. And I'm known for that. If you can Google it, I have a reputation. I'm known yes. for that. I criticize based on facts. I am an ordained pastor. I yes. am not looking to make money on earth. My aim yes. is to make it to God's kingdom. My, my yes. aim is to make it to heaven. So when I criticize, I criticize based on facts. I will not come and lie and mm -hmm. then twist and then bring up propaganda. If I'm saying anything, it's because I've researched it and it's the truth. Now, yes. so worry on the other hand, lies. So worry is a criminal. He is a petty blackmailer. And it's just because of people like Muhammad Buhari, Nasi El Rufai, Sanusi Lamidu, Sanusi that propped him up and made Nigerians believe him. This man, I've told him, take me to court. I've shown you facts. I've shown you. I showed you documents. I showed you audio. I showed you video. The man lies. He came on your show. Did he not lie, Regina? Did he not lie? I'm asking you. <laughs> no, Regina, I come on now. Let's hear yours. Did I can not tell you categorically that he lied because I do not have the uh, documents to support but it. I showed you the video. I, you just showed me something. I have not seen it. I have not. No, seen no, no. It. You watch the video. You I confront to me. And say, okay, no, Regina, now, you, you confront to me. Criminal and say that they are lying before they take it. Do I look like I can survive one day in jail? No. So no. before I can answer anything, but, but be bold enough. He came on I your saying. show. He, oh, hold on. He came on your show and told yes. a lie. He said mm -hmm. that he had not ever, ever backed Muhammad Buhari. Did you not say so? Do you want me he to pull the video so. again? Okay, but then the video, okay. Now, before you can say it's a lie, you have to consider the context like we explored. Okay, but let, let us let us rest that because that is not an issue. It looks to me like Shawari's delivery is very acidic. He has called uh, Dangote all kinds of names. He has called Tinubu all kinds of names. He has called you names. He has called me names. He has called everybody names. But should we focus on that? Should we not be able to use Can I address that? and look beyond that and Can try I address to meet in the situation? Oh my goodness. Why is it always kicking this man off? Oh my God. Come back, Reno. Okay. Yes. Okay. One second. I have to put you up on screen. I have to put you on screen. Yes, I have to put you on screen. Yes. Okay, okay so ahead. let me address that. Let me yes. address that. Now, yes. so you said Sowari has um, said horrible things about Dangote, right? Yes. About Tinibu, about yes. you, and about me. Now, let me tell yes. you this. In 2015, Mm -hmm. uh, um, Sowari and Sahara reporters were not writing anything negative about Muhammad Buhari and you know I did in fact, you can google it you can go to the archive, the archives of Sahara reporters, they mm -hmm. were not writing anything ab ab bad about Muhammad Buhari mm -hmm. what happened is that six months after Buhari became president, Buhari released his ministerial list when Sowari saw that his name was not there that was when he began to attack Muhammad Buhari. Is that not prior that? to that, mm -hmm. prior mm -hmm. to that, he wasn't attacking Muhammad Buhari. They were praising him. They were saying like, oh, Daniel has come to judgment. They were using words like body language, that even his body language alone is fighting corruption, that even his body language alone is giving electricity to Nigerians. The romance ended when Muhammad Buhari <laughs> sent his ministerial list to the National Assembly. And so everybody said, what, 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 what? Oh my God, my name is not there. Boom! He said, attacking Muhammad Buhari. I'm not like that. I'm not like that. I'm a number one best-selling author. If I need money, I write books. I don't depend on people. I don't depend on politics to make money. So I'm very different from Omar Yale Sowari. So please, do not ever put my name and Sowari in the same sentence. I reject that. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Not that criminal, that blackmailer. No, 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 no. I reject that. Now, can we move on? Yes, okay. yes. Can Let's move on. Okay, now, uh, for, um, from the polling, because I um, often poll and get people to send in questions. One of the things that really stood out was, apart from his acid tongue, um, a lot of people have accused Shawari of being uh, of blackmailing people and extorting money from people. But the fact of the matter is, none of the people he, you know, that have claimed to be blackmailed have been able to come forward and say, "This is what he tried to blackmail me with. This is the amount of money he collected from me." Nobody has done that. To say I that he it. has blackmailed and extorted money from people. Please tell I us have done story. it. Tell us your story, a black man. Okay, story. now the reason why Satan was attacking Christ is not because Satan hates Christ. The reason why Satan was attacking Christ is because Christ is God's spokesman, and Satan hates Christ, so Satan was attacking Christ. Now, I come from a wealthy home. I was brought up in a wealthy home. I have never ever been poor. I became a resident of the U.S. at the age of nine. I schooled in England. Now. I was brought from the United States to become spokesman to President Jonathan. And then Omar Yale started writing horrible things about me. Horrible things about me. In 2014, Omar Yale Sowari wrote a story about me that I was an armed robber. That I went to a house in Worry with guns blazing and I robbed the house and I robbed 25 million. Please don't take my word for it. Google it. I wrote to Omar Yale Sowari. I said, oh my God, I have children. I have a family in America. This thing you're doing is a lie. Please stop it. I provided him with proof. I said, I have not been to worry since for years. I've not been to worry. I've not even visited worry. So how can you say these things about me? Oh my God, so worry, completely ignored me. I had to fly to America. I had to hire a lawyer. And all these things I'm saying, you can check it, you can put it on Google. My lawyer sued Omar oh so worry. And Omar Yale Soware still would not take down the story. Eventually, my lawyer discovered that Omar Yale Soware was being sponsored by the Ford Foundation. So my lawyer wrote a letter to the Ford Foundation telling them all that Omar Yale Soware had done. And it was only then, only then, that Omar Yale Soware took that story. Now, I'm a person of high credibility, high credibility. Look, this is a picture of me and the current Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson. This is another picture of me and the immediate past Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Theresa May. This is, I got the Humanitarian of the Year Award at the Hollywood Film Festival, November last year, November 2019. You can check it out. I have credibility. I imagine what, that money that I spent on hiring that lawyer. I built an orphanage in Nigeria. I had children in the orphanage. People from Bonu, who's, who did uh, uh, Boko Haram orphans, they are in the orphanage I built. I could have used that money to feed those orphans, to train them, to educate them, to clothe them. Someone forced me to pay a lawyer to go and to, to spend that money on the lawyer trying to claim my good name. And then there's, there, there's, there's, there's one thing you have to understand. You can write a lie about somebody unknowingly. And then when they provide you proof, then you take it down. But when you write a deliberate lie, you want to destroy somebody, you write a deliberate lie because you want to make sure that I'm not able to defend President Jonathan. That's the kind of person that Sowore is. Now, the people that he brought to power, they've caught him because they know what he can do. They know he's a big liar, they know he's a blackmailer, and they've thrown him in jail. He can't leave Abuja. On, when he was under former President Jonathan, he wrote lies upon lies upon lies upon lies. He, he was allowed to visit Nigeria, he was never arrested. But these people, because you know the thing about Satan and his kingdom, Satan's kingdom is not a kingdom of love. It's a kingdom of cruelty. So he's in Satan's kingdom. His fellow Satan, Muhammad Buhari, the demon of Nigeria, has caught him and said, look, I know what you are going to do. And I put him in jail. That's what, my, that's what I have to say. Oh, my God. Okay. So in your books, he is a criminal who tried to blackmail you. And nah, not, not in my books. I provided facts and evidence. Yes. Please okay. don't say in my books. I provided okay. evidence. I, I yes. am an evidence-based person. This person, which is very necessary. Okay. And, um, okay, so um, on that line, okay, because you have provided evidence, I, I will not, like, flog it. 
okay? We cannot argue against evidence, okay? Hopefully, Shawari will come someday and defend himself on that level. But let defend me Defend himself uh, against video evidence? Uh, no, he, maybe he has his own side of the story. Who knows? But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we know. Stop okay, laughing. Okay. Stop laughing. Stop laughing. Stop laughing. Let's, let's move on. Okay. okay. So, um, you must give it to Shawari that since he was a young person, he has been fighting for the cause of Nigeria. He no, has no, that, uh, uh, please let me respond to that. That is not true. Soware has not been fighting for the cause of Nigeria. Soware has been fighting for his pocket. People that fight for the cause of Nigeria don't lie. People that fight for the cause of Nigeria don't blackmail. Okay, look, I built an orphanage for um, uh, orphans from um, Bonu. Am I from Bonu? Did I, no. did I go and advertise that I built an, uh, an orphanage? I kept it, though. I did not see anything. I mean, I, 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 the only reason why it came out is when these false allegations uh, came. People who who are fighting for Nigeria, you know them. They are not. They don't just go there and set up a news outlet and start lying against people. Look, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Former President Jonathan had a, a wedding for his daughter. His mm -hmm. own daughter invited people. You went and you lied that the man was giving out gold-plated uh, um, iPhones. Okay, we contacted iPhone. I'm sorry, we contacted, we contacted Apple. We got a letter from Apple that it was a lie. We sent it to him. He refused to publish the truth. Now, you and other Nigerians read it and believed it. Is that the kind of person that is fighting for, for Nigeria or fighting for his own pocket? You can imagine how heartbroken former President Jonathan felt. You can imagine how heartbroken the young girl felt. You can, what, what, what if you have some ooh, very extremely beautiful daughters? I'm telling you. What <laughs> if I write something like that about your daughters on their wedding? How are you going to feel, Regina? I would be very upset. Okay. All right. Um, let's move on. You can. Um, I, I get what you're saying uh, in your in your analogy to Satan and his cruelty and uh, people who mean well for others do not go telling lies about others. But since he was 21, I was in University of Lagos. I saw that boy and all his activism. I saw him mobilize the people. What is Shori doing that the people love him so much and are so accept? Uh, 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 please let me respond to that. Okay. No, no, please. wait, wait. They love him so much. He has become a lightning rod. Let me respond to that. And they embrace him totally. What can you Please, or the that, government... Let me respond to that. Yeah, to Please. be able to align so let well. Let me respond. Now, Regina, you ask questions. That. Allow we me need to that. Yes, yes. If, if, as you say, Nigerians love Sowari very much, mm -hmm. and the election was held last year, February 27th, we saw the results of that election. Yes. Hmm? If Fela Durotoye... Mm -hmm. uh, Kinsley Mogalu, they all scored higher than Omoya Lesoware. Omoya Lesoware, who you claim the people of Nigeria love so much, came last. In fact, the amount of votes that he had cannot make him a counselor. So, Regina, I'm asking you, I did in fact, I don't deal in fiction. How much do you want me to tell you how many votes that he had? I'm a man was... for him. So, you are saying that, oh, they love you so much. Okay. If you, okay, I'll give you an example now. Me, Renaud Mokri, I wrote a book. Do yes. you know how many copies of that book I sold? The yes. book became a number one bestseller. I made hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh -huh. That is literal proof. If you are saying that you that also already is so loved by the people, let, then how come the people did not vote for him? How okay, come they voted know. for Fela Duroto? Let me finish, please. I allow okay, you okay, okay. How come they voted for Fela Duroto? How come uh -huh. they voted for King Slimogalu? How come yeah. they voted for um, uh, LBS Epressoli? How come they did not vote for him? How come he came last? Huh? Mm -hmm. I, I, I remember that when, when I was a child, we had this housemaid. And then when, anytime there was a race, and then the person that uh, uh, came last, she would say, ooh, you carried Po. How come Omar Yeniso Wari carried Po? <laughs> How come? So, look, so it is either you are wrong, Mm -hmm. And the election is right, or the election is wrong, and you are right. Regina, which is it? <laughs> Let me say something, Reno. Okay. Ah, Regina, you cannot answer now. I, no, no, no. I cannot answer. I cannot answer Omoyele's questions. I am not so worried. Let, okay, let me good, let good, ask good. you something. Mm -hmm. If he was allowed to debate, remember there was a national debate. Mm -hmm. Where was out of the picture. If he was allowed to debate, 
If he was allowed to campaign on an even kill, if he was allowed to present himself fully and thoroughly with no, no arrest, and no, do you think that he would not have made a bigger impact than he made? Now, Can I respond, please? Wait, wait, don't, let me say something else, then you respond. If Tawari was such a, a non gratis as you know, we're trying to present, he would not be so arrested, rearrested, locked up, caged. He would not. So my 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 question is, why are we so afraid of this boy? A boy can I respond? Can I respond? And the laptop will bring down the government. Ca to can me. I respond? Talk to me. Yes. Okay. Now, so Ware was not arrested during the election. He okay. was not arrested before the election. So Ware was arrested after the election when he lost the election and then he tried to pull off a revolution so mm, please get okay. your facts right he okay. was not arrested before the election he was not arrested during the election what happened is that he came last according to that our house girl he carried oh and then because <laughs> he carried oh <laughs> he now came and said that okay he's going to do a revolution if it had been under a military government he would have been arrested and shot now that is one thing Mm -hmm. Just, um, uh, during the debate, the person that did not turn up was Muhammad Buhari. Atiku turned up. Obie Sekwesele turned up. Fela Drotoye turned up. Kingsley Bongalu turned up. So what is your point? My guy, yes. So they all turned up. Yes. And then all these people, they all did phenomenally much better than Sowari. So again, I'm asking you. Was he uh, allowed to, to debate? He said that he was stopped. No, uh, no, no. Uh, Regina, it is, yes. people, it, it is people who do not deal in facts that Sowari is a liar. And you know, it, it is people who do not deal in facts that Sowari can deceive. Sowari was arrested after the election. He was not arrested during the election, before the election. He was not stopped from debating anything. Muhammad Buhari did not turn up. That day, Atiku was there. Obi Ezekiel was there. Kingsley Magali was there. Fulad was there. Uh, Buari did not turn up. Mm -hmm. So that is the fact of the situation. Now, if you want, maybe if you doubt me, I can open it up for you and I can show you. I'm, I, you see, one gift that I have is this. I am a meticulous record keeper. Yes. I am a meticulous record keeper. If I'm going to open this big mouth of my, mine, I must use this big brain of mine. If I don't use this big brain of mine, I don't open this big mouth of mine. So I've given you the facts there. It is people who are not very who are shallow that someone like Omo Yale so can come and deceive. Oh, so you're saying that he's deceiving me because I'm shallow. Come on now. No, 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 no. I did not say that. I didn't say yeah. that. No, 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 please. Regina, look, yeah. let, can I say something, Regina? Yes. Can I say something? Regina, you're not shallow. Not at you're all. You're beautiful. Thank you. You're very beautiful. Now, I can tell you how I know you're not shallow. I remember the movie that you did with RMD. I remember how you did your lines. Remember the movie where you put RMD in the bottle? Remember? <laughs> you put him in the bottle, right? Can you remember that movie? And then yeah. at the end of the day, he went to a church and they told him, and he came to the house. The director of that movie said that he was so surprised at how you were able to remember your lines. RMD couldn't remember his lines, but you remembered your lines. You are a deeply intelligent person. You are Thank not shallow. You. Flattery, flattery will get you everywhere. So keep it coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, so my problem now is why we're having this discussion and this um, argument is because we want the best for Nigeria. We want the best for Nigeria, and if we have to be honest with ourselves. The Jonathan dispensation did not do well. No, no that, 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 I need to respond to that. Yes, please, go ahead. To that. Yes. Now, I yes. did in yes. fact... Let's be honest. No, please, yes. please let me respond now. Okay. And it's going to help your interviewer. When you ask yes. questions, allow people to learn. It's going Amen. To, yes. that's, it's going to help you. Listen, yes. now, I, I deal in facts. I don't deal in fiction. Yes. According to the World Economic Forum, yes. Nigeria was the third fastest growing economy in the world under Jonathan. Now, you can check it out according to the World Economic Forum. Now, who are you going to believe between the World Economic Forum and Sahara Reporters? Now, according to CNN Money, Nigeria was the third fastest growing economy in the world under Jonathan. 
Mm-hmm. Now, who are you going to believe between CNN money and Sarah reporters and the money? Don't worry. According mm-hmm. to the British government, and you can Google this, Nigeria was the fourth fastest growing economy in the world. Now, who are you going to believe uh, between the British government and Omo Yenisu Warrior? Mm-hmm. Under Jonathan, according to the International Food Policy Research Institute, Nigeria was the only country in Africa that was able to roll back hunger. As I speak to you right now, Nigeria is the world headquarters for extreme poverty. Mm-hmm. Under Jonathan, Jonathan built 165 Almagiri schools. Why? Because Nigeria has 12.5 million, okay, no, sorry, Nigeria had. 12.5 million children out of school in northern Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Jonathan built 165 Almagiri schools for them. How many schools has Muhammad Buhari in northern Nigeria built? Under Jonathan, the dollar was 150 naira to one dollar. Mm-hmm. Under Jonathan, petrol was 87 naira per liter. So look at it now. Under Jonathan, according to Gallup polls, and you are in America, you know Gallup polls is a reputable, objective, private polling company. According to Gallup polls, they did a poll, and your, you, you can Google it. Your listeners can Google it. They did a poll. Nigeria under Jonathan was the happiest country in the world. Happiest mm-hmm. country in the world. Today, we are not even in the, among the top 100 happiest countries. Okay, does so, it mean that... Things, yeah, go things definitely got worse. It does Sorry? not mean that things got worse. Things got worse from the time of Jonathan to the time of Buhari. Things definitely got I, I, worse. No, that is not true. That is not true. Under Jonathan, things got better, and I've given you the facts. Except yeah. you are saying, no, except mm-hmm. you are saying that the World Economic Forum. The, I'm not saying uh, that. Okay. No, 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 no. Can I land? Except okay. you are saying the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, CNN mm-hmm. Money. The Global Terrorism Index, Transparency mm-hmm. International, and mm-hmm. uh, International Food Policy Research Institute. I, I said they are saying that they are lying. Mm-hmm. So I don't okay. say that they are lying. Okay. So there was a time that um, Shawari was the golden boy to Jonathan. Okay. He no, there was never a time like that. He said two things about Shawari because uh, you know uh, Shawari uh, 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 was to Jonathan to get into office. Uh, uh, that is not like true. He was going to be stepped over after uh, years. Uh, 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 that is not true. Okay, Jonathan never said that. And let me tell you what was happening. Oh my god. Ooh, hold on, people. Hold on, people. Hold on, people. Oh my goodness. Hold on, people. I am so this has never happened before. Really, what are you doing in my studio? What are you causing? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Go okay, ahead. So let me continue. Let me continue. I was speaking. Let me continue. Now, you, have, you need to understand what happened. Omaya Yesowari is like Satan. He knows how to manipulate and lie. He keeps on saying that he was instrumental in fighting the cabal under Yaradua. Let mm-hmm. me set the record straight now. Mm-hmm. What happened is that under Yaradua, Nasir El Rufai was yes. on exile. Nasir El Rufai had a, had a bitter feud with President Yaradua because President Yaradua exiled him because both of them were competing to be president under Obasanjo and Obasanjo chose uh, Yaradua over Nasir El Rufai. Mm-hmm. So Nasir El Rufai wanted to come back to Nigeria, desperately wanted to come back to Nigeria. But there was no way he could come back. So what happened was that during that time when um, uh, Yaradua was in a coma, he saw an opportunity and he began feeding um, Omar Yadu in, uh, some other information, not because he loved Jonathan, but to fight the cabal that was against him. That was what was happening. That was what happened. Well, now, you said something. Please, wow. Let me okay. Yes. You said something that, that Sowari was one time uh, Jonathan's golden boy and Jonathan praised him. If you can find me a video. There's a video of my uh, timeline. Sorry? There's a video on my timeline. Uh, please show me the video. I- I'll be patient. Show me the video. I will not talk. Um, uh, it's on Facebook timeline, and I cannot get out of the studio to, you know, continue. Can, can you get a phone? Get, get, ask somebody to give you a phone, and then you play okay. the phone. Okay. He was praising uh, Shawari's work, okay? But it looks like he was a golden boy then when he was trying ah, to... No, 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 no. Play to the video. Like, Let me talk, Reno. It's my show. Okay. I know, but play the video. Okay. Uh, and then 
When Shawari brought him in and started exposing the ills of his government, uh, he became public enemy number one. The that same is thing not happened, true. The same thing happened when Buhari came into office. Okay, Buhari was the, um, was loved. Shawari was loved by the Buhari people, and when Shawari started exposing their crimes. Uh, uh, he became public enemy number one, and he's still exposing the crimes of this government. And I'm wondering why you all cannot work together to keep exposing corruption and raise Nigeria up. You can know, I respond to that? Tech, tech, tech. Oh, can can I respond to that? And everything. Yes. Please can just watch this video right here. Yeah, play the video. 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 was relevant and it was yes please respond educate us what is going on oh my god hold on for me yes i'm back on well, I'm holding, I have to put you on screen to respond. Okay. All right, go ahead, please respond. Yeah, but what you said, Regina, and I'm quoting you, is that Jonathan praised Omar Yalesowari and mm -hmm. that he said that Omar, Yale Omar Yale Sowari was his golden boy. That's not what happened. That's not what, because I know that video. That's not what you showed. Mm -hmm. So at no point at all did Jonah, President Jonathan praise Omar Yalesuwari. At no time at all was Omar Yalesuwari President Jonathan's golden head boy. It never happened. So let's establish that fact. And your video, and your video, your video does not show that. Was denied the mandate to become president when the Yara people were doing it. He fell upon me and others who were asked to fight and effectively let Jonathan become president. You can verify that. And when it was over, he sent one of the dollars to me. Whatever I wanted, I should ask him that he should ask him to pack my things and come to Nigeria. I told him I said I don't have the I don't have the tolerance or temperament to walk in government because I will see my mind like you bear me out next day. <laughs> so, the boy is doing what he uh, knows. Uh, uh, please, 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 uh, Regina, let me respond. Regina, please. That he is made not one thing for somebody no, that no, just no, said to Regina, him. Regina. They even offered him money. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. What you said, Regina, is that Jonathan. Praised Omar Yalesoware and that Omar Yalesoware was Jonathan's golden head boy, and you had a video. I asked I, you to play I the video. So let me let me finish now. Come yeah. on, please. I asked you to play the video, and you played the video of Omar Yalesoware himself talking. Mm -hmm. Omar Yalesoware. Oh God. <sighs> I think you keep pressing something because. Okay. Yeah, Regina, I'm not pressing anything. It's from your hand. I'm not touching anything. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so let me repeat. So, President Jonathan never praised Omar Yalesu Wari. He, what, what the video you just played was a video of Omar Yalesu Wari claiming that President Jonathan praised him, and I've addressed that. That is a lie, that, and that's what Omar Yale Soare does. Omar Yale Soare lies. Like I told you, Omar Yale Soare was not fighting for Jonathan to become president. No, I told you, one of his sponsors is Nasir El Rufai. As at that time, Nasir El Rufai was in America. He was on exile. 
Nasser al Rufai was an, an American was an exile, and Nasser al Rufai was having a fight with the cabal. So he used Omoya Nesuari to fight the cabal. As a matter of fact, if you buy um, 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 Ulushagu Adeniyi's book, if you buy his book the, on the on the year of the years, page 242, he actually exposes in that book that Nasser al Rufai confided in him in that book that he used Sahara reporters. Sorry, he didn't he, he mention Sahara reporters, but that he lied about the cabal. And then, although he did not mention Sahara reporters, it was Sahara reporters that he used to, to tell those lies. So you have to realize, Regina, I am somebody, I'm a, I'm, I am a meticulous record. I know who you are, and I appreciate If you are going to say anything, yes. if it's not the fact, don't say it. Okay, because no, no, I, say I, it so that you can debunk it or, or help us uh, understand yeah. it. Okay, so I will say it. So don't tell me not to say stuff. I will say it and I'll show and you will debunk it. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. But let, let's go on. Because the, we should not make the big Regina, can we, ask, we, Regina, can we talk about Nigeria? Nigeria? Huh? Can we talk about Nigeria and other countries? Exactly. We, Nigeria? we must not miss the big picture. The big picture. And why we like Show Worry is because he is shedding. Um, no, why do you like Show Worry? You were uh, at the only lag with him. Me and uh, so many Nigerians. Press that button and come back. Me and so many Nigerians. The fact, the reason we like him is because he is bringing out, you know, talking about corruption. Are you back? He's talking about corruption. This is what we need in Nigeria today. We need to expose what is going on. We need to work towards fixing it so that we all can have a country that works for all of us. Okay? We need to work towards exposing corruption. We need to work towards routing it so that we all can have a country that works for us. We all can help raise Nigeria and be proud citizens of Nigeria. This is why we have to expose corruption. This is why we appreciate your work. This is why we appreciate your work. And we hope that you all will come together and work on this thing, you know, tie this loose end so that we can do better for Nigeria. Okay, so let's talk about Nigeria. Talk to me. Tell me why you are not running after Amechi, why you are not running after, um, uh, what's his name, the former Emma, Sanusi Lamido. Why are you not chasing them? Because they were the, uh, they were very instrumental when it came, it came to um, asking Jonathan. They asked serious questions that they were going to not answer. They asked about the reserves that was left in the pockets before uh, Jonathan's government came in. They asked about... Um, uh, a lot of funds that were missing from the coffers, and um, they worked really hard towards removing or terminating that government, and, and they were successful. Why we're chasing a small boy with his laptop and his uh, blog? I don't know. Why are you not talking about these big fishes that you know are in Can the? I Yes, please respond. You see, but that's the issue. Work on yeah, that but, but let me respond now. See, that's the issue. That's the issue. Before you do an interview, Regina, you need to research. You know, you need to research. I can't. I mean, everybody comes on here and tells me when I don't say what you want to hear. No, no, I no. It. That's Re why I'm Regina, I researched it and I wrote it but, down. But Regina, can I, can I respond, Regina? Yes, respond. No. Question. Don't attack me. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry yeah. for. I'm sorry that you feel I was attacking you. But what I'm saying that you need to research is this because you now say that why am I not going after Amechi? Let's not going after them. Amici? Yes. But, no, allow me. Yes, yes. Allow me, please. Yes. I went after Amechi. Google Amechi tips. Okay. No okay. Jesus. Okay. All right. So he went after Amechi. And uh, he went after Sanusi Lamido, and it looks like these people are going to be big players in the coming dispensation. So let's talk about how we are going to prepare ourselves. Let's talk about how we are going to prepare ourselves to play major roles. Okay, Regina, I don't know why this keeps happening. But anyway, let me continue. I went yeah. after Amici. I exposed Amici. As yes. a matter of fact, it trended. It was the number one trend in Nigeria, unbelievably, for two weeks. Amechi tips, Google it. Yes. I exposed Amechi. Amechi tips, Google it. As, as I'm speaking to you right now, you can take your phone and Google it. I yes. exposed Lamido, Samusi Lamido. I exposed him as a liar. Samusi Lamido, Samusi said 49.8 billion was missing. Exactly. Then he brought evidence that mm -hmm. it was not true. Then he reduced the amount to 22.2 .2 billion. Then we brought evidence that it was not true. Then he reduced the amount to 
12, uh, sorry, 10.8 billion. I brought all this evidence there. It's in my book. My book is a number one bestseller. If you want, mm. if you give me your address, I can send my book to you. Please I, do. I cite them. The difference between Amechi and um, uh, Lamido, Samusi Lamido, is that what happened is that when they, uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari became president, they got what they wanted. One of them became um, a minister under Buhari, and Sanusi Lamido Sanusi became MIR um, about a year before, um, before Buhari was uh, elected. And Sanusi Lamido Sanusi had said all that he wanted to achieve in his life was to be MIR of Kanu. Today, Sanusi has been dethroned as MIR of Kanu. Why? For financial misappropriation and corruption. So you can see that the same thing that we accused him of when he was governor of CBN followed him there, proving that a leopard cannot change its spot. Sanusi Lamido Sanusi is a thief, a common criminal. His own governor, his own governor said that about him, not me. He was dethroned as MI of Kanu for financial misappropriation. He claims that he spent 135 million naira on phone calls in three months. You're back. <laughs> okay. In three months. Thank you. Thank you. But no, it's, uh, these are facts. That's what, I mean, you can Google it. He said he spent $135 million on phone bills in just three months. It's there. You can, you can check it. And so the, he was removed by the canon governor, detroit by the canon governor for misappropriation, misappropriation of funds and then for insubordination. These are facts. Okay. Now, Amechi, I exposed Amechi. You can Google it, Amechi tips. I mean, I exposed him. And when I exposed him, what I said, and you can check it, I said, Amechi, if you deny this, I'll bring out more. And as I speak to you now, this is over one year after I exposed him, Amechi has not denied what I said. Okay. All so right. it is wrong for you to say that I am only following Sowari, but I did not expose uh, Sanusi and Amechi. I, I did. did. Thank you for setting that straight. I'm glad you did. So how can we all now... Can you reduce the volume of your, of your device? Me? Yes. Okay, I'll reduce it. Yes, thank you, because it's recognized. Now, how can we all work together? How can... We, Reno, please comment on Wendell. My Simon Saga. What is that? Again? How can we all work together to raise Nigeria up? Do you want to what? comment on that? Yeah, I mean, you know, one thing you have to understand, I believe in scripture. Scripture, Second, Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is useful for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God is complete, lacking nothing. Now, like-minded people, good people, people who are truthful should come together and we need to form a critical mass. And yes. when we have a critical mass, because what you have to understand is that in other countries, political parties are based on ideology. Yes. For instance, in the United Kingdom, political parties... Oh, my God. Okay, political parties. He was saying that in the United Kingdom, in uh, advanced nations, political parties are based on ideology. People come together and form a critical mass. I hope he's going to talk about how people in the diaspora can come together and... Um, Form, you know, a relevant body that can impact positively on electoral career and also talk about electoral Okay, so as I was saying, um, yeah. I don't know why, you know, um, uh, there's something happening from your end. Um, right. so, uh, so, so in Nigeria, we have to move away from these tribal based parties. For yes. instance, Muhammad Dibwari has a tribal based party. I'll give you an example. This is the first time in the history of Nigeria where there are three arms of government, the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature. This is the first time in Nigeria's 60-year history that all three arms are being headed by northern Muslims. Muhammad Buhari is the head of the executive. He's a northern Muslim. Tanko, Justice Tanko Muhammad, is the head of the judiciary. He's a northern Muslim. 
Ahmed Lawan is the head of the legislature. He's a northern Muslim. And then we see this also with the armed forces. Every department of the armed force, except the Navy in Nigeria, is headed by northern Muslims. So you have the Minister of Defense, the Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Air Staff, the Director of Military Intelligence, the Director of the National Intelligence Agency, the Director of the Department of State Security, the Director of the, the, the Controller General of the NIS, the NCS, the uh, um, NPS, and the ESCC are all northern Muslims. So there is such an imbalance in Nigeria. Now, Regina, I, you're from the Riverrun area, so you're used to boats. Now, okay. if you have a boat, and then you have too many people on one side, and you don't have enough people on the other side, what's going to happen to that boat? It's going to topple. Exactly. And the reason why Nigeria is collapsing right now is because of the tribal and ethnic imbalance in Nigeria. Because the, the, uh, the government is so lopsided in favor of the northern Muslims to a very ridiculous extent, and so that, that it is toppling Nigeria. We need balance. Under former President Jonathan, there was balance. Under President Yaradua, oh, may God bless his soul, a president from... I'm just going to wait because when he does that, he's able to come in back by himself. And um, we're just going to wait, okay? He was saying that we need balance in the, govern in the government uh, structure. Um, the current government, as it is, is too lopsided. Okay? And when it's lopsided, it's going to topple, okay? So we're just going to wait for him to come back. Uh, okay, so... We need a situation that there's balance. And the only way we can do that is to move away from parties that are built around tribe. So I'll give you a very good example. Now, you have the APC. The APC was a conglomerate of two tribal parties. The CPC, formed by Muhammad Buhari, which was a tribal party of northern Muslims. And then the ACN, which was a tribal party of Yorubas in, uh, um, um, in the southwest. Now, you, had, you need a truly national party that is based on ideology, not based on tribe. That is based on, is completely on ideology. That is the only way. And one of the things that I've said, and I wrote about this in my book, is that we have to get rid of state of origin. So for instance, you, Regina Asker, if you go to Kanu and you live in Kanu, and you pay your tax in Kano, and you don't commit any crimes in Kano, then you should be able to contest for elections to be a local government chairman or governor in Kano. And that was how Nigeria was under the British before we had independence. The first mayor of Enugu is a man called Umaru Altile. He was a Fulani Muslim from Kano state. But he moved to Enugu. And in 1957, he contested to be mayor. Mayor is like local government chairman of Enugu. And Igbo people voted for him. Not just that, Namdi Azikiwe went to Ibadan. And he contested to be an MP. And Yoruba people voted for him. But after the British left, when we had independence, then we became tribal. Our party started to be built around tribes. And we need to understand this. Right now, a lot of black people are talking about black lives matter. But black people ourselves, we don't like each other. I go to Nigeria, people say, ah, that's Yoruba man, because my mom is partly Yoruba. They say, okay, that is Shakiri man, because I'm a Shakiri. And uh, 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 this man does not want to deal with me. You see, um, uh, uh, Igbo people, they don't like the, uh, Northerners, or they don't like Yoruba. They call Yoruba Ofe Manu. That is people who have too, too much oil in their soup. Yoruba call Igbo, you know, um, Northerners, Hausas call Yorubas, Mbati, Mbati people. Hausas, Northerners call um, Igbos, Nyamiri. So we need to get rid of all of these things. We need to get rid of all of these things. And it also, because if we do not do that, we're going to keep on using our energies to fight each other. Look at it. You live in America. According to the United States Census Bureau, who are the most educated people in America? Nigerians. Nigerians, not one of the most. I didn't say one of the most. The most educated bar none. Amy Cham wrote a book, Tiger Mom, How to Raise Your Child Like a Nigerian. Nigerians mm -hmm. are used as examples on how to raise children who are hungry for success. This man, the British Prime Minister, he wrote uh, 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 Boris Johnson, 
This man, he wrote a column. He said that Nigerians are, are hungry for success. How is yes, it that sir. when we leave our country and we go to America and Europe, we, we are well. so successful? But mm -hmm. in our own country, we are not able to be successful. It's because of this tribal-based politics, identity politics. And we have to move away from it. I'll give you a very good example. And That's exactly what you were saying. Sorry? <laughs> That's exactly what Tomori said. No, no, I watched Tomori's interview. That's not exactly what he said. Now, yeah, so I'll, I'll give you a very good example now. Yes. Look, in Lagos State, for instance, yes. we can't have Bola Tinubu as a godfather determine who is going to become president, governor, and who's not going to become governor. That mm -hmm. is wrong. That is not democracy. Bola Tinubu needs to be put in his own place. Yes. So we cannot have that. We cannot have in a, a, a those states Adams or Sean Mullin wanting to determine who is going to be um, a governor. We cannot have that. So those, that kind of a big man politics has to go. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been fighting for. That's what I've been fighting for. I am a Shakiri. I am from Delta State. When mm -hmm. I was building an orphanage with my money, not money that I stole, nobody has ever accused me of stealing money, not Muhammad Ibuari, of, of whom I'm his biggest critic. When I was building an orphanage, I did not build an orphanage for Shekiri people. Mm -hmm. I built an orphanage for northerners from Bornu State whose parents had been killed by Boko Haram. Okay. So I we need that. Yes. We need leaders who have who think beyond their tribe yes. and beyond their religion. Yes. Okay, so we have done a lot of talking today, and this is one good way to move Nigeria forward. So, um, you wanted to say that we should make a critical mass. How can um, Nigerians in the diaspora be a relevant tool or a relevant uh, block when it comes to voting in 2022? Because we're Nigerians. Let too. me respond. But we call, um, contribute a lot through uh, um, directing investment with all Let the, me respond. the families. Yes, go ahead. Please. The way that can happen, I'll give you an example. Nigeria Republic is a small country that is our next door neighbor. Yeah. Nigeria Republic, their economy is 120th of Nigeria's economy. Yeah. Yes, Nigeria Republic has diaspora voting. Yeah. In their last election in Nigeria Republic, citizens of Nigeria Republic were able to vote in the Abuja embassy mm -hmm. of the Nigeria Republic. So Nigeria needs to have diaspora voting. Yes. India has it. Other countries have it. So we need Nigerians to, to have diaspora voting. Yes. Nigerians in the diaspora mm -hmm. sent $23 billion back home yes. last year. Now, you, you know how America was founded? No taxation without representation. Exactly. The Boston Tea Party. Now, you can have Nigerians. Do you know that the biggest contributor of foreign exchange to Nigeria is not oil? It's not the World Bank. It's not IMF. It's Nigerians in the diaspora. Yes. So we need to give Nigerians in the diaspora, that we need to give them diaspora vote, voting. Mm -hmm. And if we don't do this, then we are not going to be able to build on that critical mass. Okay. Now, Atiku and... Uh, um... These other people that you supported, you know. I don't want to ask you why you supported them, but uh, I'm kind of happy that they didn't come in. Tell me what you would do to curb corruption in Nigeria. Because if we don't curb corruption, nothing is going to go forward. There's resonance from your volume. Nothing is going to go forward if we don't um, curb corruption in Nigeria. I think we'll propose using an online system to curb corruption. If we have something in place where nobody's able to steal money or where people who steal money can be brought to justice, Let me respond to that. that would be the beginning of our redemption as a nation. Okay, now, if you look at corruption, you have, you've got to fight corruption scientifically. Yes. Now, corruption in Nigeria is mostly in the public service. And why is it in the public service? It's because the, the centers of wealth in Nigeria are still being controlled by the public service. For instance, NNPC is a mm. very corrupt body. And NNPC is, is still controlled by the public service. That is, the people working there are still public servants, civil servants. Nigerian Railway Corporation is still a, um, a public uh, corporation. And so there's a lot of corruption there. If you want to fight corruption in Nigeria, you've got to do what America did, what Britain did. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Privatize all these bodies. Privatize the NNPC. 
sell the NNPC to private bodies the same way British gas was, and British petroleum was sold out and privatized by Margaret Thatcher. Privatize the Nigerian railways. The same way British uh, railways was privatized by Mrs. Thatcher. The same way Amtrak was privatized. Now, by the time you privatize all of these bodies, who is going to be corrupt? If you spend your money buying NNPC, if you spend your money buying NEPA, if you spend your money buying um, um, cement companies, if you spend your money buying refineries, you are not going to tolerate, um, you're not going to tolerate um, corruption in there. The reason why there's corruption is because these things are still being held by the government. Let's have a civil service that is purely civil service, that they have nothing to do with controlling a government uh, uh, um, um, uh, cash cows. Mm -hmm. So why you have that? So uh, Because if you look at where the corruption is coming from, according to Transparency International, mm -hmm. the corruption is coming from all these revenue generating agencies. So if they are privatized, then you're not going to have all this corruption. That is on the one hand. Then yeah. also, we need to be able to fight corruption with science. It's, look at what Ibrahim Magu was doing, just going around, arresting people, arresting people. That's not how you fight corruption. Prevention mm -hmm. is better than cure. How mm -hmm. do you fight corruption? You, make, you do what former President Jonathan did. You cannot do any transaction above five million outside your account. And then if you do any transaction above five million outside your account, that is money laundering and you should be arrested. February 24th last year, we saw bullion vans going into Bola Tinubu's house. The next day, he was interviewed on channels, and he admitted that those bullion vans contained money. And according to the law, the anti-money laundering law, once you move to any, any amount, more than $5 million in cash outside, outside the banking system, that is a crime. The, Magu did not arrest Bola Tinubu. The president did not arrest Bola Tinibu. In fact, Bola Tinibu kept on being invited to the presidential villa and being treated like a king. I think a week ago, some demonstrators were in Abuja at Unity Fountain doing a demonstration saying that Bola Tinibu must be prosecuted for that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm talking about. When you use, when you privatize, you're going to get rid of about half of your corruption. And then by the time you now use science, that means you now use, um, uh, you implement the Anti-Money Laundering Act and you don't care who, which political party the person comes in, then you are going to have more corruption. And one thing I'm going to recommend for Nigeria is this. Mm -hmm. Let's be like America. In America, uh, you have to understand this, is that the somebody, states... So, I'm sorry. Somebody said, but Nigeria electricity was privatized, but now it's yours. No, that's not true. That's okay. why I see, is, is, is this kind of ignorance that, that I'm, I'm so glad I'm talking. Yes. Nigeria, what, what was privatized, you need to understand, is the mm -hmm. power generation. Power mm -hmm. generation. So the power generating company, they call them Genco. Gencos. Yes. The Gencos were privatized. The yes. transmission, transmission, that is, you see, the Nepal lines was yes. not privatized. It was left with government. Yes. And so how can you privatize the Genco? Because what, it was President Jonathan that privatized the Gencos and he was going to privatize the transmission companies, which are the Transcos. But Buhari yes. came and then stopped it and reversed it. So that is the problem. So you're now having a confusion. Everything should be privatized. The generation companies and the transmission companies should be privatized. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Rina. We had a very robust discussion, and we were able to see that uh, um, with the facts you prove that you're not a criminal, that uh, Shawari says you are, and uh, we were also able to see that even though um, you and Shawari seem to be saying the same thing, you are still bent on the fact that Shawari is not a straightforward and honest person. And uh, we are not going to explore that. We'll leave that to you and Shawari. But we want to request a few please to continue to route corruption wherever you see it. That you should not like, you know, gloss over things just because the principle is your point that you should stand up and be a guardian of light and truth because in so doing, you will help elevate Nigeria. The same thing she is saying, so I said them on my show the other time, about Bola Tinubu, about the diaspora vote and all that. But when you listen to him, you want to say everything he's saying is new, it's not true. 
right? You're saying the same thing. So we pray for a time that you all will come together, you know, put your resources together and fight corruption to elevate Nigeria. Any last words before we say goodbye to our audience? Yes, um, uh, because, you know, I like to deal in facts. And yes. um, it's very, very important to yes. say that I deal in facts. Um, I don't... No, no, come back and say your last words. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we have to wait for Reno to come back and close out. It, it will be unfair to, um, you know, take him up now. Take him off now, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Please. Yeah, I don't gloss over corruption. Yeah. I do not. I fight corruption. I fight dishonesty. The mm -hmm. difference is that I do it with facts. You mm -hmm. know, and I, if you want to fight corruption and if you're not prepared to do it with truth, then you're not really fighting corruption. You're actually adding to corruption because corruption must be fought with truth. It's just like corruption. Corruption is fire. Mm -hmm. If you are fighting fire with fire, guess what? There's going to be more fire. You can only fight fire with water. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Thank you yeah. so very much, you know, for coming. And I look forward to interactions like this because we get to learn a lot. We get to understand better, you know, and be able to separate propaganda from what is true and what is right. Thank you so very much. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay, so finally we come to the end of that interview. I hope you all were able to learn something and understand something there. That things are not usually as they seem. It's always best to dig deeper. And um, I am happy that we have been able to hear it from both sides. And it's left uh, to you. It's up to you to make up your mind uh, after further investigation to believe um, what you feel is true. But my takeaway from this interaction is that uh, Mr. Reno and Mr. Showery, who are both champions of truth, should marshal their forces together, help throw um, open you know, and help fight corruption in Nigeria because all their efforts marshaled together can only do one thing. It can only help raise Nigeria up. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of this uh, production. And um, for right now, I'll say good night, God bless, and see you next time in the office of the citizen. Take care of yourselves and of each other. Good night. Oh, my God. Stop.